All right, YouTube. Today we're gonna to take a look at the situation where we have two spring carts, which are gonna blast apart, and we're gonna solve for their final velocities in this situation. Now, typically, when talking about the conservation of linear momentum, when we have an explosion like this, we'd be given one of the final velocities, at which point we can just use the conservation of linear momentum to solve for the other final velocity. But in this case, we don't know either final velocity. All we've been given is the amount of kinetic energy which has been released as this spring between the two carts relaxes. Now, because we have two unknowns in this problem, we're gonna to need to set up two different equations in order to solve this entire problem for both final velocities. Now, the first equation is gonna be based on the conservation of linear momentum, where the initial momentum of the system is gonna be equal to the final momentum of the system. Now initially everything is sitting at rest, so there's going to be no linear momentum of either cart before this explosion. Now after the explosion, this 2 kilogram cart is going to be moving along at some unknown value V2 final. So the linear momentum of the cart after the explosion is going to be MV, 2 being the mass and V2 final being the final velocity of our 2 kilogram cart. Plus we're gonna have our three kilogram cart moving along at some velocity V3 final. Now whether you choose to call either of these final velocities positive or negative at this point is actually a little bit irrelevant and we'll come back to that a little bit later. So moving this term to the other side of the equals sign, we've set up an equation relating our two final velocities to one another. The problem being we have only one equation but we have two unknowns here. So ultimately we need a second equation, and to generate that second equation we're going to take a look at the kinetic energy which is released in this problem. Now we know there's going to be some initial kinetic, which in this case is zero, plus some non-conservative work. That's going to be the energy which is released by the spring, and that's going to leave us with the final kinetic energy. So given the fact that everything is at rest first, there's going to be zero initial kinetic, plus our 100 joules of kinetic energy which are released by the spring, that's going to leave us with a final kinetic energy. Now that final kinetic energy is going to be the kinetic energy of this block, that's 1 half 2 v 2 squared, plus the kinetic energy of this block. And now we have our second equation relating the two velocities to one another as well as the energy released in this explosion. So ultimately, by looking at both linear momentum and kinetic energy, we've generated a system of two equations with two unknowns. And all we're trying to do is just solve for both of those unknowns. So rearranging this equation for one of these values and subbing that value in over here. we find the final velocity of V3 is 5.16 meters per second. So taking this value now and subbing it in up here, we can solve for V2 final. And we find the final velocity of cart two is negative 7.74 meters per second. The negative simply means the cart is moving in the opposite direction of this three kilogram cart. So this is how you solve for the final velocity of two objects which explode apart when you're only given their masses as well as the energy which is released in that explosion. And on that note, that's all for now.